Recently, I needed to do some path manipulation in a bash script and I didn't know how and I hate bash programming, but I knew ChatGPT could probably solve that. So I logged into ChatGPT, told it what I needed and it wrote the script and it worked great. And since then, I've been playing around with ChatGPT a lot. It's really great at some things, sucks at others. Let's check it out. One of the things it's amazingly good at is dialects. So this is in Swiss German. And I'll get that to translate to German and English. And here it comes. And this is correct. And in English is the kitten with the little white paws crawled into the kitchen cabinet. So it got that one completely correct. Whereas the first time I heard that phrase, an aunt said that to me when I said that Swiss can be unintelligible. And she said this particular sentence is particularly unintelligible to German speakers and this just gets it straight away. Now growing up in southern Germany in the 70s, uh, the Schwabisch we spoke was pretty much unintelligible to people from the north of Germany. So I started experimenting with how unintelligible Schwabisch I can put into this thing and still haven't figured out what it means. Although I found as I was trying to make a, a sentence more and more unintelligible, I still kept getting it. But then if I started a new session and hit it with that cold, it wouldn't get it. So as I uh, went on with the session, it uses previous things I typed in to figure out what I meant. So I had to then go back and experiment with what it gets cold, because when you start a new session in JackGPT, it basically loses all of uh, the stuff you've typed in so far and just goes back to its base model. So very interesting that way experimenting with it. The more I hit it with Shrabbish, it seems the better it gets at it. So this is the least intelligible Schwabish sentence I could come up with that ChatGPT on a new chat still gets. Uh, es hat ihm passiert, drum hat er keine Leute geholt und ist einfach auf der Baumdorf gehasst, zum einen Äpfel abrupfen. And let's translate that to German and English. And this is correct, although the this here is, implies that it doesn't know that it's male. Um, and in English, he or she, it should be he, Felt very rushed, so he didn't get a ladder and just climbed up the tree to pick an apple. And I would guess, even if you're German, unless you're my age and from the south, uh, that original was completely unintelligible. And even for ChatGPT, it's right on the edge, uh, because I actually uh, shot this uh, take several times, because if I prompted to do it in German, somehow it gets it wrong, whereas I prompted in English, in this case, it gets it right. And if ChatGPT doesn't quite understand it, it just takes a good guess at it. So possibly it doesn't understand this, but it just guesses correctly. So then I had some more fun with this. So this is the Schwabish original. I had it also translated into Amish German, that's Pennsylvania Dutch, Plattdeutsch, which uh, has got a funny sound to it, and of course Hochdeutsch, which is proper German. And you'll notice the Hochdeutsch version actually has um, the most amount of letters in it. Uh, this is one of the reasons I don't like Hochdeutsch. It is very awkward to speak. Whereas, for instance, this Schwabish is shorter just by looking at the number of spaces in there. I space it out so they all line up the same. And then English is also quite short. And I'm no expert on English dialects, but I had to translate to Cockney and to Jamaican English. And, uh, yeah, it's kind of fun that way. Uh, I like how the Jamaican English is actually the shortest one. So, uh, very practical language that way, I think. And another one from English to Jamaican. Um, it's actually known as Jamaican Patois, the uh, Creole that they speak there. Um, let's see, what does that come out as? <laughs> Why you a rush so? That plenty time the man. <laughs> and playing around with dialects with ChatGPT, I just find it hilarious. I mean, some of the stuff it comes up with. Um, and I've also been uh, hitting it with commands in Schwabish. So telling it to do this and that in Schwabish and it just, it just gets it. It's amazing. Now, if it could do voice recognition, I could just talk to it in Schwabish and that would be even more amazing because uh, only people from the South really understand that. Now, one of the things it seems to suck at is math. So I paid for ChatGPT4 to see if that was any better. So we've got uh, two four-digit numbers. I'm going to try to get it to multiply those together. And it comes up with this number, which is very close, within a fraction of a percent, but not quite correct. So I'm going to tell it that's wrong and see what it comes up with. So I told it it's wrong, and now it's trying again. And that's still wrong. So I'm telling it still wrong. And a different number, still wrong. Note that is still wrong. So 
So I'm asking it to show how it came up with that calculation. And it shows the steps. And it's still wrong. I'm just now looking at the intermediate products while I'm editing this, and it's a complete bogus. None of it is correct. And since it's not very confident of this, um, it, uh, it accepts my answer. But I've experimented. I tried to convince it that uh, 6 times 7 is 43. And as much as I tried to tell it and correct it and say, no, no, it is 43, it's 43, it's 43, it was very confident that 42 was the correct answer and it wouldn't accept that. And another time, uh, multiplying two four-digit numbers together, I told it that the correct answer was actually a wrong answer, just off a little bit, because its own answer was also wrong, and it accepted my answer as correct when I gave it to it. And then when I told it to calculate the area of a rectangle of those dimensions, it used my wrong answer in its calculation. So clearly, it looks at the previous chat history to figure out what is most likely to be true. Fundamentally, it's a language model, not a math and science model, so it just looks up in all of its uh, history that it knows from basically all the stuff that it's ingested in building up the model to make something that looks like it's correct, but sometimes it's just way off. But it's very good at translation and very smart about it, so I've got the page for the specifications for my Pantorotor and I want to translate that to German. So what I've done is, here is the source for this web page, and I pasted that into ChatGPT4, and I'll tell it to translate that to German. Go. There, it's working at it. So the nice thing is, it's leaving all the formatting alone, because any other tool I've used for translating a web page in the past has completely messed up the formatting. Uh, if I put the source code in there, it messes up the formatting, and if I have it translate the website, the HTML that comes out is completely garbled from what I started with. So here's my original HTML, and this is the translated version, and you can see my file is very much the old format, which is something I very much like. And let's pop up the uh, German version of that page. Here's the German version, here's the English version, and the translation here is actually quite good, so this is very impressive. So this works really well for a relatively short web page. Uh, I tried a uh, much longer web page of mine and it just kind of stopped translating halfway through and then just didn't output the rest of it. And even some of the text didn't quite correspond so much, but for short ones, works really well. Next I'll ask it to calculate the focal length of this lens given that it projects an image from two meters away to half a meter on the other side. And I'm trying this first with ChatGPT 3.5. Here's my query. And there it goes. So I got that wrong. It's supposed to be 0.4 meters. It says negative 0.67. So minus 0.67 suggests a diverging lens or a concave lens. Although here it says because it's negative, it indicates a converging lens. That's also incorrect. Now the calculations are wrong. But if we look up here, the 1 over f is 1 half for the 2 meter side minus 1 over minus 0.5 for the other side, so essentially plus 2 on that side. Then it simplifies and it says, okay, 1 over f is the 1 half plus 2 over minus 1. So it switched the sign on me, um, although that is correct so far. So because it switched the sides, it's now subtracting and that's where it gets the wrong focal length. So let's try to give it some hint um, because it's going from here to here, it gets that wrong. So I'll tell it. Minus, minus 1 over minus 0.5 is equal to 2. The, oh, now it uh, goes from here to 2. It still divides by 0.5. Um, so, of course, it gets the wrong focal length. I was in the past able to give this enough hints that I got it correct. But let's try the same thing with ChatGPT4. For a convex lens, it's negative if it's on the same side, but it's on the other side. Um, so, but it's doing a double negative on here, so that's good. So 1 over f is 2.5, that's good. Works out to 0 0.4 meters, so the focal length of the lens is 0 0.4 meters, so it got that one correct. So ChatGPT4 is better at solving problems like this, but as I just shown earlier, it still doesn't know how to multiply four-digit numbers together. Now, I asked ChatGPT to write me a pentomino puzzle solver, and what it comes up with is not a working solution, but remarkably good pieces of one. 
but I think it's just regurgitating pieces of uh, pentomino solvers that I found online because there's quite a few of them out there. In fact, I published one on my website about 20 years ago as well. So let's try some simpler problems. Take a hexagon where the sides are all length 1. How many squares will fit inside of that with edge length 1? Just one, of course. Using ChatGPT4, here is my query. So it says it needs to calculate the area. I don't know why. Oh, okay, it works out the area of the squares. So it says 2.6 squares, which means it can fit two whole squares. I suppose if we cut up the squares, that would work. However, if we're allowed to rotate the squares, we can fit more than two squares into the hexagon. Oh dear. So it says now it says we can fit three squares in there, whereas before um, it said there's only enough area for 2.6 of them. So it's just making up complete bullshit. Another trivial one. Given three squares, how many unique shapes can be made with these if each square must touch another square along an entire edge for both squares? And let's see, what does it say? Yeah, in a straight line, they can be arranged in an L. And the shape that looks like a T. And they can be a compact 2 by 2 square with one square missing. Well, that is essentially the L. So there are four unique shapes. Well, not true. And the T shape is not actually valid because two of the squares will not be touching along the entire edge. So that's wrong, but not as bullshitty as I was expecting. All right, JatGPT4, for a regular pentagon with edge length one, what is the distance between non-adjacent corners? And yeah, it's got that right what it needs to calculate. So let's see. I have a right triangle? I'm not sure what it's getting at here. And it gets it wrong. I didn't follow the whole work, but I know this answer is wrong. So reading over what came out of it, it's a bunch of very intelligent nonsense, but uh, it's just wrong. It doesn't come up with the right answer. And this problem can be solved much less intelligently, but correctly using the law of cosines. So we have 108 degrees here, one here, one here. This formula gives us this length here, which is 1.61803. Well, I think it's safe to say at this point that JatGPT really sucks at geometry, but of course those are visual problems very far from text. It is very good at simple programming challenges. So I'm asking it to write a Windows batch file to identify palindromes in the command line arguments, which is something that is really, really, really awful to do because Windows batch files are just weird. And let's see what it comes up with. Okay, come on. So let's copy that code and we'll save that and let's just try that out. Okay, so we have two palindromes in there and it's wrong. So because I really hate batch files, I'm not going to attempt to debug this, but this is actually my second run at this. I did a dry run before recording it and before that it came up with this piece of code and that piece of code as saved as palindromes 1 actually works. How well JatGPT can solve or program something depends a lot on whether something similar is part of its training data or a lot of similar things. So if you ask it uh, clever questions that other people have asked before, it generally is pretty clever. But if you ask it stupid and trivial questions that nobody's bothered to publish the answers to because they're just too simple, then it's out of its league and it tries to use bits of more complicated solutions to come up with something. So it has no intelligence of its own, but in general it is surprisingly good at faking intelligence, especially if asked intelligent questions. But it makes me wonder, like, is this the way to approach general intelligence? I mean, it is really good at faking things and maybe this is the way to approach actual intelligence. Perhaps our own intelligence works in a similar way, it's just we're so good at faking being smart that uh, unless somebody smarter is around, we get away with it. It counts as actually being smart even if we're faking it. Now recently at a social event I was talking about AI with a University of New Brunswick professor. Um, he teaches a course where they have to write a lot of essays and in the past a lot of students dropped out before the end of the year because it's just too much work. Not so much this year because he says they're generating their essays using AI like ChatGPT and now he has to nail them for it. But how? It's not like you can show the source like you can with conventional plagiarism, and ChatGPT produces something different just about every time, so unless 
you know exactly what it was prompted with, you're never going to get the same essay out of it. But he said, uh, clues are that the essays are completely free of grammar errors, yet at the same time, the essays kind of contradict themselves. So that to him tells him that it was generated with AI, but how do you definitively prove that? And I said to him, well, if I was a student, I would probably try to use AI and I would carefully guide the AI to produce an essay that is consistent. <laughs> and his response was, if you're going to go through that much work, you might as well just write the essay. True enough. So is it necessarily cheating if you're using AI? Certainly, if you just use AI and say, write me an essay, it's going to produce crap. But uh, yeah. Um, AI is an interesting thing. Uh, chatting with another friend, he feels that AI should be banned because it will uh, make the world a worse place and, uh, you know, sort of like social media has. And can't argue with that, but the question is, if you wanted to ban AI, how would you go about it? I don't think it's practical. Uh, the, the, you know, the, the cat's out of the bag. So we'll see where this AI takes us. Uh, I will certainly keep playing with it because I find it super interesting.